oolite, oregonite, CaCO3, calcium carbonate, deep versus shallow, everything you're gonna wanna know about reef sand. A big thanks to our sponsor, Coral Vault. I just use Cornerstone Reef Rock from Coral Vault to set up the new macroalgae seahorse tank. So let me show you. I just want to say that I was super skeptical at first. I didn't think that it would be beautiful, but it's so lightweight and super porous and crazy colorful that I think that this might be my new favorite reef rock out there. If you're interested in the Cornerstone Reef Rock or premium imported or aquaculture corals, check them out, www.coral-vault.com. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank in collaboration with Marine Depot, and welcome to week 14 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks, reef sand. If you missed episodes one through 13, we will put a link up here and a link to the entire playlist in the description below. I haven't mentioned this in a while, but if you consider subscribing to Marine Depot and to My First Fish Tank and checking out our Instagrams at Marine Depot and at My First Fish Tank and giving them a follow. A big thanks to the My First Fish Tank blogger, Max. If you want to see the written form of this video, go to myfirstfishtank.com, click on start here, and just scroll to the bottom week 14. Links to the sand bed calculator and all of the Carib Sea Reef sand we're going to talk about today are in the description below. And without further ado, let's talk about reef sand. So what is reef sand? We're talking about CaCO3, which is the chemical name for calcium carbonate. And it's usually some form of oolite, which are just spherical rocks from 0.25 to two millimeters in diameter. Reef sand is probably largely made up of dead coral skeletons, which is a crystallized form of calcium carbonate known as aragonite. Let's try to get this straight here. Aragonite is a crystallized form of calcium carbonate. And then we have oolite, which are spherical rocks ranging in size from 0.25 to two millimeters in diameter. Reef sand is often marketed as live sand. Obviously, sand itself is not alive, but when we say live sand, we're talking about the beneficial bacteria that will help in the nitrogen cycle. Reef sand comes either wet or dry. The only difference being wet reef sand is already alive with beneficial bacteria, whereas dry reef sand is not already alive and will have to populate with that beneficial bacteria over time. There are three primary functions of a sand bed. The first being biological filtration. It is a large surface area for beneficial bacteria to colonize to help aid in the nitrogen cycle. The second is purely aesthetics. I'd say most hobbyists agree that a tank with a sand bed looks nicer than a tank without a sand bed. So a lot of people just add the sand bed in because it looks nicer. And the third function of a sand bed is a home for livestock. But there are various creatures such as a sand sifting goby that require a sand bed in order to filter out the food they need to live. A question we're often asked is, do I need a sand bed? And the answer is no, you don't need a sand bed. But especially if you're a beginner, we at My First Fish Tank and Marine Depot would highly recommend using a sand bed, primarily because a sand bed offers so much surface area for beneficial bacteria to colonize. There are obviously pros and cons either way, if you do add a sand bed, you're probably gonna find your tank will settle into the nitrogen cycle quicker and will have less swings because there's just more available space for that beneficial bacteria to colonize. It does complicate things a little bit and you do have to do maintenance on it, but overall we think the pros of a sand bed by far outweigh the cons. But another negative is, is it can become a detritus trap. Fish food, fish waste, other organic things can build up over time and if not properly taken care of with a cleanup crew or through manual removal, can start leaching out and causing huge phosphate problems, ammonia, nitrate spikes, things like that. So you do have to care for a sand bed. You can't just plop it in and forget about it. Having a bare bottom tank, on the other hand, a huge pro of it is it's way easier to clean because you can direct flow around your aquascape all of that detritus will oftentimes either stay suspended and get sucked into your filter, or it will just congregate in one area and then you can easily remove it with a gravel vacuum. But the negative of not having a sand bed is there are all sorts of critters, inverts, and fish that you won't be able to keep that will need a sand bed. And there's just way less surface area for beneficial bacteria. So unless you're a seasoned professional, you may find it hard to find stability in your tank. Let's talk about deep sand beds versus shallow sand beds. We're gonna talk about shallow sand beds really being anything under four inches, 
most typically between one and two inches, and deep sand beds being four to eight inches, usually you see them around five to six inches. For beginners out there, we're gonna recommend that you do a shallow sand bed. You will get the benefits of the beneficial bacteria and increased stability without having to deal with the headaches that come with anaerobic areas. A shallow sand bed, one to two inches, is a great sand bed, not only for aesthetics, but it also allows different kinds of snails and livestock to live in there, and it's relatively easy to take care of. The thing about a shallow sand bed is it's not deep enough to have anaerobic areas. Now, we don't need to go into huge details here, but there are aerobic bacterias and anaerobic bacterias. And aerobic bacteria, the ones that use oxygen, are found in oxygenated areas near the top of a sand bed on the exterior of a rock. And they're gonna help convert your ammonia to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate. But that last step, taking your nitrate to nitrogen gas, requires anaerobic bacteria. And those are often found deep inside live rock or below four inches in a deep sand bed. While a shallow sand bed doesn't offer any anaerobic space, I've never had an issue with that because water changes and just routine maintenance will help keep your nitrates low. A deep sand bed, on the other hand, if you do it correctly, has both aerobic and anaerobic spaces, but you have to be careful because there are pockets of dangerous gas that can form in the anaerobic areas. So you need to make sure that you have different sand sifters, different snails, different sand sifting starfish, things like that, that will gently move through that sand bed, releasing those pockets of gas before they become a problem. Sand colors, well, there aren't a lot of sand colors that are commercially available, but you're basically having white. You have white with some pink and some blues in there, and then you have black. That's pretty much the only three colors that I know of that sand comes in. Grain sizes really range anywhere from 0 0.5, so one quarter millimeter in diameter, all the way up to six millimeters in diameter, but we can break them into three categories. The first category of grain size is what we call sugar fine sand, very, very fine sand. This is 0 0.25 to one millimeter in diameter. The next size we're gonna call special grade, and special grade is one millimeter to two millimeters. And the last category of grain size is crushed coral, and that's two millimeters to six millimeters in diameter. But that leads to the question, which grain size should you get? And there are pros and cons to each. Starting out with the sugar fine, the very, very fine sand. This is the sand that I'm gonna be using in my seahorse tank. And the reason I'm using that is because the seahorses can injure themselves by swallowing larger grain sizes. The biggest problem with sugar fine sand is if you put too much flow in your tank, it will create sandstorms inside and coat everything. I've been having that problem and it's just set up and my entire scape is covered in sand right now. So I need to figure out how to tune down my flow so that doesn't happen. But on the positive side, that sugar fine sand is so fine that detritus, that fish food and fish waste can't really get below it. So the sand bed itself doesn't really become a detritus trap. All of that larger particulate matter sits on the top and either gets sucked out in the filtration or it's easy to remove with a gravel vac by just vacuuming the surface. Special grade size, anywhere from that one to two millimeter range, is really a good mix of the two. It's definitely heavy enough that you can crank up your flow and you're not gonna get sandstorms, but it's not super coarse because in a really, really coarse sand, all of that detritus will just sift through the crushed coral and end up on the bottom. So it's a really good mix. It's not as fine looking, like, like when you imagine a tropical beach, it's not the super fine sand. For most beginners, I would probably recommend getting something that falls in that special grade category. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it's just a really good mix between the sugar fine and the coarse crushed coral. Lastly is crushed coral. We're talking two millimeters to six millimeters. I would never recommend this for a beginner or really anybody doing a reef tank. The problem with crushed coral is the pieces are so large that fish waste, fish food, whatever it's gonna be, is just gonna fall through it over time and it's gonna just stay on the bottom of your tank. And unless you are doing regular gravel vacs, heavy gravel vacs, it's not ideal. Now, you could do a mix of a special grade or a sugar fine and then just put in 
a little bit of the crushed coral on top, especially if you want to have certain creatures like pistol shrimp that would then use those things. But rather than going with crushed coral, I would just go with that special grade, which is going to have a good mix of the smaller and the larger. How much sand do you need? The easiest way I think to go about this is just go to the Marine Depot sand bed calculator. You just put the dimensions of the bottom of your tank you select which sand you're going to use and you say how deep you want the sand bed to be and the calculator will tell you. Let me give you an example over here. The JBJ RF 65 is 65 gallons in total, but basically it's the footprint of a 40 gallon breeder. And I went with 30 pounds of the sugar fine sand and that gave me about an inch to an inch and a half throughout the tank. But you're going to have to remember that how much you need is going to depend on the density of the sand. Something like a sugar fine sand is more dense and therefore more heavy in the same packaging. When you have a crushed coral, there's all that air that it ships with. So you might not need as much weight for that same depth. But the easiest way just to think about it besides using the calculator is if you want a shallow sand bed between one and two inches in depth, if you go with a special grade or a sugar fine sand, you're probably gonna go with a half a pound to one pound of sand per gallon of water. What about freshwater sand, playground sand, or sand from the beach? Could I use them? It depends. Freshwater sand, I have no idea. To be totally honest with you, I'm not a freshwater guy, but I would say, why would you buy a freshwater sand when there are so many good saltwater sands <laughs> available? So I don't know. If you're someone who knows the answer, whether or not you can use freshwater sand, put a comment down below. But why would you do that when there are saltwater sand, reef sand options available? Playground sand, I'm going to say no, definitely not. We don't know what sort of heavy metals or things will leach out of that playground sand. So I would never go to Home Depot, never go to Lowe's and pick up the inexpensive playground sand and use that in your tank. Stick with reef sand. And lastly, can you collect sand from the coast if you live in California or you live anywhere else in the world near a coastline? Potentially, yes, but you have to know a couple things. First of all, you need to check your local and national laws. Here in the United States, we have national laws, we have California state laws, we have county laws, we have city ordinances. And any of those laws or ordinances may make it illegal for me to harvest sand from the beach. I know plenty of places in the world it's illegal to do that. So obviously you can't do it if it's illegal in your area. But if you do live in an area where you can harvest sand, you just need to make sure that it's super clean. And even with that being said, I would probably rinse it several times with distilled water or RDI water before placing it in your tank. Popular types of reef sand. I'm actually going to use my cheat sheet here because it's so confusing and we're just going to talk about the Carib Sea line because Carib Sea kind of has the corner on the market and they have all sorts of different types of reef sand and that's pretty much all I've ever used. The first thing to understand, there are four different ways that Carib Sea brands their sand, which doesn't make a whole bunch of sense to me, but let me explain it. The first is their Arig Alive brand. It's their most popular and it comes in six different types. And it arrives wet with beneficial bacteria. And, and I don't think their Aragolive brand is pulled from the ocean. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it's manufactured, however they do it, and it's done away from the ocean. This is the most common one that I use because it comes with that beneficial bacteria and it comes in the six different grain sizes and color selections. So it's a really good option. That's their Aragolive line. Then you have their aragonite line. This is so confusing because all sand is aragonite. So all of the sand is aragonite, but they have a special line of sand called aragonite sand versus the Araga live sand. And the aragonite sand is, as far as I can tell, the exact same as the Araga live. Instead of six Araga live types out there, there's only four aragonite and the aragonite comes dry and not wet, so it may take a little bit longer for that beneficial bacteria to colonize. The third line of Carib Sea is called their Coraline, which is also confusing because Coraline is a type of algae, so it doesn't make any sense. Again, Carib Sea, I'm sorry, you're just confusing everybody, but I'm trying to help here. <laughs> and all Coraline is, it is two types of crushed coral. So you're never gonna go with the Coraline. Don't worry going with the Coraline line of Carib Sea reef sand. And the fourth brand, the fourth line of Carib Sea sands is Ocean Direct. And Ocean Direct, here it is, it only has two types as opposed to the Arig Alive, which has six types. But like the Arig Alive, the Ocean Direct arrives wet 
with beneficial bacteria and seawater in it from the ocean. So the difference between these two is the Arig Alive, I believe, is not pulled from the ocean, whereas the Ocean Direct comes with a ton of beneficial bacteria and seawater, and it claims to, here it is, it claims to have up to 1,000 times more beneficial bacteria than other sands. That's really confusing. If you want more explanation or you just want to look at it, just go to the Carib Sea website. They have explanations for all four of those lines on the website. So I went ahead and bought six, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think six, six or seven different bags of sand, just so I could show you guys what they look like up close and personal. And I break up these two sands, which come from all four of those lines, the Arago Live, the Aragonite, the Coraline, and the Ocean Direct. I break them all up into two size groups. The first size group being the oolite sand. Those are the sands under two millimeters in diameter for their grain size. And then you have your larger sizes, which are going to be your two to six millimeter grain sizes. Okay, let me go grab the bags and then I'll be right back and I'll show you. Okay, first up, oh my goodness, from their sugar fine. Okay, this is their sugar fine. It's from their aragonite line. This is what I'm using in the seahorse tank. Sugar fine sand, 0.25 to one millimeters. And remember, their aragonite line comes totally dry. So this is 30 pounds, and this was enough for my roughly 40 gallon breeder. It's almost completely white, and it's super fine, but it also comes really dusty. So you need to make sure that you rinse it several times with RDI water or distilled water. Okay, next up you have the Carib Sea Ocean Direct line. Remember, this is the one that comes wet, that supposedly has up to 1,000 times more beneficial bacteria. And this is their Oolite, which is the exact same as their Aragonite line. Their Aragonite line is called Sugar Fine, and it's 0.25 to one millimeter. Their Ocean's Direct line, which they call Oolite, not Sugar Fine, is the exact same, 0.25 to one millimeter. Different branding, obviously. This one comes with beneficial bacteria, and this one doesn't. Next up is Fiji Pink, and I thought I bought a bag of Fiji Pink, but evidently I didn't. Fiji Pink is one of my favorites. Fiji Pink has grain size of 0.5, to 1.5, so it is larger than that sugar fine, but smaller than the special grade. It has a really nice white color, but it has flecks in there of pinks and blues. And it's one of my favorite grain sizes, not only because I like the color, but because the grain size itself, which I use here in the Fluval 24 gallon reef tank, is big enough that it doesn't blow around and cause sandstorms, but it's small enough that a lot of that detritus doesn't filter down through the bottom causing a detritus trap. So it's a really good middle of the road option for sure. And lastly, in the Oolite range, which is sands under two millimeters, part of the Aragonite brand, which remember is their dry sand brand, this is the special grade. Special grade being one millimeter to two millimeters. It's almost completely white. A nice sand, it's a little bit on the coarse side and I've used it in the past and I like it, but I have found that small pieces of fish waste and fish food will sink down over time. So either do a shallower sand bed with the special grade, or you're gonna have to make sure you do a lot more maintenance with cleanup crew and with a gravel vac to keep this one clean. Now we're on to the larger grain sizes. These are between the two and six millimeter. The first of which is the Carib Sea. This is the Arig Alive brand, which is their wet branding. And this is the Hawaiian Black. The sizes of this are 0 0.25 to 3.5 millimeters. So it has some very large pieces. I like this sand. I've used it before. I like the black look. It's almost entirely black with specks of white. There are two issues with the sand. I have found these pieces a lot of the times are magnetic. So if you're not careful when you use your magnetic algae scraper, you can just scratch the heck out of your glass. So you have to be really careful when using a magnet near this glass. And the other issue is, again, with those grain sizes up to three and a half millimeters, you can get a lot of detritus trapped in this. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this if you're a beginner, unless you're building like a Hawaii specific biotope, then this would be a really good bet. Then we have Bimini Pink, which is again from the Arug Alive brand, which is wet, so it comes with all sorts of beneficial bacteria. This is 0.5 to five millimeters. So it has some big pieces, but when I say big pieces, this is largely a smaller grain size with some larger chunks thrown in there. Whereas 
when we're talking about the Hawaiian black, this is just on average a much larger grain size. I've never actually used the Bimini pink, but it's a very nice white looking with some flecks of color and some larger pieces. This could be a really good option if you're gonna have things like pistol shrimp or gobies, because pistol shrimp and those gobies will like to take the larger pieces and move them around to create little hideouts around the tanks. So this could be a really good idea for that. And lastly, we have the Florida Crush. Coral. Crushed coral is two and a half to 5.5. This is just going to be the largest grain size that Carib Sea really does sell. They do sell one that's a little bit bigger than this, but two and a half to 5.5 is really large. I would never use this unless you have a really specific reason for it because the grain sizes are so big that it's just going to become a detritus trap over time. But if you did want to go with something like sugar fine sand, you could then add in some of this on top so that gobies and pistol shrimp will have more coarse sand to move around the tank. If I was to give a recommendation for beginners, I would say stay away from the very, very coarse crushed coral and probably stay away from the sugar fine sand because it's gonna mess with your flow patterns. So stick with something in that 0.5 millimeter to two millimeter range. That would be something such as your special grade, your Fiji pink, or you could go with the Bimini pink, even though it has some larger pieces on the whole, it's a smaller grain size. How to install your sand bed? Well, there's two ways to do it. If you're using a dry sand, and we're talking about the Carib Sea Aragonite line, it needs to be rinsed. I don't know if it says it's pre-rinsed, but I wouldn't trust it even if it does say that because I have rinsed it before and there is a lot of dust on it. So just get out a five gallon bucket, pour that dry sand into there and then use distilled water or RODI water and rinse it, dump it, rinse it, dump it, rinse it, dump it several times to get a lot of that dust off. Then after you finish your aquascape and installed your aquascape, then scoop in this now wet reef sand and just use your hand to push it around and underneath the aquascape. Then when you fill the tank with salt water for the first time, just do it very carefully. You can either pour it into a strainer or pour it onto a plate to make sure that you're not creating huge dust storms. If you are using the dry sand that usually doesn't come with any sort of water clarifier, so it's gonna be really cloudy for a while, using either a really fine mesh sponge or a fine mesh filter sock for a few days will help clear it up quicker. If you buy the wet sand, the Arig Alive wet sand or the Ocean Direct wet sand, don't rinse it because then you're just gonna rinse away all those beneficial bacteria. So you wanna put that wet sand directly into your tank after adding your aquascape. Just use your hand again to spread it around to push it underneath the aquascape and then fill up the tank carefully so as not to create huge sandstorms. The thing about the wet sand is it often comes with a water clarifying pouch. So once you turn your pumps on, just add that water clarifier and it will usually clear up within 24 to 48 hours. And the last topic for the day is how to care for your sand bed. I would say there's one huge warning when it comes to your sand bed. Don't overdo it with your sand bed. In the past, I have had a problem where I would constantly gravel vac my sand bed. And not just a light gravel vac on top, but deep down. And the problem with doing that is it disrupts the biological filtration. And on top of disrupting the biological filtration, it's also gonna disrupt whatever critters are living in there, whether it's your snails or your crab, who knows what's in there. When it comes to caring for your sand bed, just don't overdo it. There really are two ways to take care of your sand bed. The first is during a water change, use a gravel vac to lightly and gently gravel vac the very, very top layer of the sand bed. Don't go digging around there as deep as you can, but just do the very top. And as long as you go with an oolite size under two millimeters, you're not gonna have to worry about all that detritus falling to the bottom like you would with crushed coral. So just gently use a gravel vac to clean the top of that sand bed from time to time. The other way to take care of your sand bed and the way that's really important is to buy critters that are gonna aerate it. There are all sorts of cleanup crew members out there from brittle stars, starfish, snails, conches, sand sifting fish. There are just tons out there. And if you buy the correct mix of these, they will take care of the tank themselves. For example, back here in the clownfish harem tank, I have serith snails, I have conches, and I have one sand sifting goby that keeps that sand bed in pristine condition. That in the last six months that I've had that tank, I haven't had to use a gravel vac on that sand bed even once. 
Well, that's it for week 14. I hope you learned a ton about sand. There's still a lot more to learn, but that will give you a good primer. Make sure you tune in next week because we're finally getting to some exciting stuff. Week 15, we're going to talk about how to make salt water. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to Marine Depot and my first fish tank. And as always, happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.